in the double cure. Save from wrath and make me pure. Could my tears forever flow? Could my zeal no longer know? These for sins could not atone. Thou must save and thou alone. In my hand no price I bring. Simply to thy cross I cling. While I draw this final breath, when my eyes shall close in death, when I rise to worlds unknown, and behold the on thy throne, rock of ages clap for me, let me hide myself in thee. understanding of your word. We pray in the name of Jesus you will continually, O Heavenly Father, inspire us and aspire us, cause us to aspire to be conformed to the King, to the image of your Son in the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. We thank you for the kingdom which resides in us and we pray, O Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we may continually bow to your will as you make us willing. We thank you for every good gift and every perfect gift that comes from above and come down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variables in it, and it's neither shadow of turn. Knowing that it is and was of your own will that you have begotten us, and that is with the word of truth. Be with us as we go through our steps. Cause us to hear. Cause us to take heed to ourselves. Cause us not to be critical of the message, but to receive it in the spirit of meekness, that engrafted word. In the name of Jesus, we pray the church says. Amen. Final apostate civilization, human society, organized politically, economically, religiously, in opposition to and defiance of God, we know are heretics. Heretics are false teachers. That is those who go according to their own opinion. What they cause is disunion. We know they are called, in the United States and in the world today, they are called sex or denomination. Tonight we're going to be looking at the aspect of the apostasy that was told us that will come upon the church in the days, in the days after our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the apostles left the earth. That's when the apostasy began. The apostasy began right after John, John the Revelator died. 
Paul said it was already in the world. It had already began <clears throat> when he was preaching. He said, but it came to it came to its full extent. It really started to manifest itself after the apostles died. That's when we start getting false doctrine. That's when they start adding all of these rituals and all of these customs in the body of Christ. That's when it began. So we're going to be reading from Jonathan Owen's book to start off. We're going to be reading a few passages of scripture tonight. Paul said, uh, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 19, for there must be also heresies among you that they, that is the elect, that is those that's being conformed to the image of Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 19, the they is those that are being conformed to the image of Christ. The they are the elect of God. The they are those who have the law put in their mind, written in their heart, written in their heart, put in their mind. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 19, the they in that verse is the elect. That's, that's the elect in that verse. The elect are the ones that's in that verse. That is those that are being conformed to the image of Christ. Those that the they in that verse are those that have been called justified, and glorified. The they is the invisible church. That's who the they is in that verse. For there must be also heresy among you that reason, that, that means the reason being, T-H-A-T means the reason being, they which exist they which are approved, they which are acceptable, they which have been tested and tried in the fire, that's the word dokimos, that's the word dokimos, those who, that's the word dokimos, the word approved. The word approved is the word dokimos, those that do not go into the fire, that means to be tested, that means to be tested. That means to be tried. It's trial. Those that are not tested, tried, or go through fiery trials are called a dokimos, which means no trial, no testing, no fire. The fire is what proves the work. The fire is what proves what you are. So those of us who are going through the dokimas, who are going through the fire or the examination, in order for us to be made manifest among each other, there must be heresies, disunion, parties, or there must be sex. Now this is what Paul talked about. And if what we're going to be talking about is final apostate civilization. Human society organized politically, economically, and religiously. In opposition to and defiance of God, apostatize from the truth of the gospel. They apostatize from the truth of the gospel. They began in the gospel, but slowly but surely, because of heresies, they began to apostatize from the truth of the gospel. But there must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. Now, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit spoke this to all the apostles in the scripture. And I didn't notice this until I, until I was studying and reading, how that the Holy Spirit told all the apostles the same thing. That's the consistency of God that is recorded in the scripture. And we, I'm going to show it to you tonight. We're going to look at it right now. It's going to be a very interesting study if you pay attention and listen to what it said. And we're going to look at each part where the Holy Spirit spoke to the apostles and showed them all 
that there would be an apostasy from the truth of the gospel. That's what the name of this DVD is. The uh, Final Apostate Civilization. Here is society, organized politically, economically, religiously, apostatized from the truth of the gospel. They apostatized from the truth of the gospel. I'm going to begin. I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to read some excerpts from here. Then we're going to go right into the scripture so you can see it. Okay. He says, <clears throat> he tells Timothy, he tells Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 5, but let's go over to 1, 2 Timothy chapter 4. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 4. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. And we're going to be looking at verses 6 to 8. This is what Paul is talking about. So you be at 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 to 8. The great apostle himself makes this principal ornament in the preparation of his triumph upon the success of his ministry, that he had kept the faith. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 to 8. That he had kept the faith. I am, said he, now ready to be offered at the time of my departure, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. Of all that made way for thy triumphant glory, which he now had a prospect of, Paul insists on this only, in particular. This is what he insists upon, that he had kept the faith. That he had kept the faith, which he did not do without a severe warfare. Without a severe warfare and conflict. You can't keep the faith without Warfare and conflict, which he did not do without a severe warfare and conflict. So great a matter was that in his esteem, which most supposed so common, so easy, that little diligence or watchfulness is required therein too. This is not easy. It is not, we do not preach an easy gospel. Paul and the apostles did not preach an easy gospel. You're not going to have it if you're not in warfare and conflict. You're not getting there without warfare and conflict. Why? You're a soldier. You're in an army. You're in a battle. You're in a war. So there's going to be warfare. There's going to be conflict. You don't think there's going to, you, you need to be in warfare and conflict. You're in the wrong place. You need to go join a Baptist church or a denomination of sect, or a heresy somewhere. The frequent serious charges with pathetical exhortation, which he gives unto his son Timothy, <laughs> to be careful herein, manifests both the weight he had laid upon it, the warfare and the conflict, the difficulty that was in it, and the danger of miscarriage wherewith it was attended. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 20. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 20. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 20. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 20 and 21. Mm -hmm. Old Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 20 and 21. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 20 and 21. 1 mm -hmm. Timothy chapter 6, 20 and 21. Old Timothy, keep that which is committed to your trust. That was... The gospel that was the faith. Avoiding profane and vain battles and oppositions of science falsely so called, which some professing have erred from the faith. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. Amen. Read. 
Read. Hold fast the form of sound words. I'm a vow. Read. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith, love which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto thee. That's the gospel. That's the faith. Read, son. That good thing that was I'm telling you what the good thing is. It's the gospel of faith so y'all can know what the good thing is. Because you know you don't know what the good thing is. So when I stop and I elaborate, just pick up what you leave off. The good thing is the gospel. The good thing is the faith. That's what the good thing is. That good thing which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost, which dwelleth in us. And the same apostle expressly mentions the proneness of some to relinquish the truth of the gospel. That's the good thing that was committed unto him. The faith, the gospel. Whom therefore he would have rebuked sharply. Go to Titus 1.13 and verse 14. That they might be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish faith and commandments of men, turning from the truth. Titus 1.13 and 14. Amen. Read. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply. What? Rebuke them sharply. What? Rebuke them sharply. Read. That they may be sound in the faith. Or sound in the what? Or sound in the what, I'm a bear? Or sound in the what, I'm a bear? Sound in the what, Cleo? Sound in the what, Jocks? Thank you very much. Sound in the gospel. Sound in the faith. Okay? See, I told you, y'all missed it again. That's the good thing. Good thing is the gospel. The good thing is the faith. Show it to you in 30 seconds. Next five or six seconds, y'all don't remember. Let's go back to 2 Timothy. Let's go back. Let's go back to 1 Timothy, right? 1 Timothy? Yes, yes. 1 Timothy 6, 20, 21. Read, Jocks. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, the gospel and the faith, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, falsely so-called, which some professing have erred concerning the faith and the gospel. Grace be with thee. Amen. 2 Timothy 1, 13, 14, Jocks. 2 Timothy 1, 13 and 14, Jocks. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of of me in faith and in the gospel and love which is in Christ Jesus. That the good thing, the gospel and the faith that good was, thing, the gospel the faith, go ahead which was committed unto thee keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. Okay, so let me put this up here so you guys won't be lost. Good thing, what is the good thing? The good thing is the faith, that's the good thing the faith the good thing is the gospel. Same thing, different terminology. Same thing, different terminology. Different terms, different words for the same thing. Same thing, different terminology. Same thing, different words. Read it again, John 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 13 and 14. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and the gospel and love which is in Christ Jesus. That the good thing, the gospel and the faith, which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. And the same apostle expressly mentions the promise of some to relinquish the truth of the gospel, whom therefore he would have rebuked sharply. Second Titus chapter 1, verse 13 and 14, the promise of some to relinquish the truth of the gospel. Those that are prone to relinquish the truth of the gospel, Paul told Titus to rebuke them sharply. Titus 1, 13, 14, John 3. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith and the gospel. Now, Neither would there be any need that some should earnestly contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints. Let's go to Jude. Jude. Book of Jude. Let's go to Jude. Jude. It's only one book. It's only one chapter. Jude. So I don't have to say chapter one because it's only one book. Are y'all waiting on me to say chapter? Learn your Bible. Amen. Jude, verse three. Read, Jocks. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, 
it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the gospel and the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. The gospel, the faith, the what? You forgot one, forgot one more. The good thing. Oh, the, the good thing, thing no. the gospel, the faith. All over the same thing. Right. So when you see it, you see you know what you're looking at. You understand what you're reading. The good thing, the faith, the gospel. Three terms for the same thing. The good thing, the faith, the gospel. Same thing. Different terminology. The good thing heals the faith, which heals the gospel. He told him to contend for the faith was delivered unto the saints. The gospel was delivered unto the saints. The good thing was delivered unto the saints. But that others, he said, are very ready to corrupt it and turn from it. Now, I was explaining something to Charles, and I want you guys to understand this, because it's a misconception and a misunderstanding of what the word of God entails and what it's about and who is it written to. The word of God, every letter that was written, it was written to the church. The problems that there was going on was going on inside the congregation. When he wrote to the Philippians, there was a problem in the congregation. When he wrote to the Romans, there was a problem in the congregation. When he wrote to the Thessalonians, the problem was in the congregation. Because many of you sitting here and others that are not here has taken this word of God and you have thought and have used it and believed that it's talking about the people in the world. No. When the letters are written, 1 Corinthians, there was problems in the congregation. 2 Corinthians, problems in the congregation. The book of Philippians, the book of Galatians, in the congregation. Ephesians, the problem was in the congregation. Philippians, in the congregation. Colossians, the problem was in the congregation. The book of Jude, in the congregation. Revelation, the problem was in the congregation. Not on the outside. The Bible is written to the church. All the letters, <clears throat> when the problem, when the prophets came to prophesy to Israel, the problem was in Israel. So now you want to have a deeper and a more clearer meaning of your Bible. Because many of you, when I'm preaching, fighting apostate civilization, human society, organized politically, economically, and religiously, in opposition to and, uh, and, and uh, defiance of God, you may be in that in the congregation. You may be sitting here, being, you may be sitting here hearing me, but you may be a member of final apostate civilization, human society, organized politically, economically, religiously, in opposition to a defiance of God. And I keep trying to stress that. Just because you're sitting here, that does not mean you are elect. It was a whole lot of them sitting in the Philippian church. But they weren't elect. So a whole lot of them sitting in 1 Corinthians in the Corinthian church, but they weren't elect. It was a whole lot of them sitting in the Galatian church, they weren't elect. That's what I'm teaching you tonight. Don't ever forget that when you open your Bible and read these books, the problem was in the congregation, not outside. Those that was in there should not have been there or else while they were there had been, had became corrupt from final apostate civilization. Human society organized politically, economically, religiously, in opposition to and defiance of God, and brought it in the congregation. So you'll know what's happening. They was bringing the doctrine from out of the world, out of their homes, from their jobs, the marketplaces, the places they were frequenting every day, and they would bring that in the congregation. Many of you have not understood that in reading your Bible. You're reading this Bible and you're looking at the world. No. The problem was Carolyn in the congregation. That means that those of us that was professing to be children of God 
was not doing our duty in the congregation. You can understand it. That's what I want to make, make, make you aware of tonight. And that's where the problem lies in the congregation. Not outside the congregation. It's those in here who profess to be Christians not doing their duty as they say they are. That means Christians. And you're not doing your duty in the congregation. Not you going outside doing your duty. We have nothing to do with those that are without. The problem is within you can't be trying to work out there and we got problems in here. No, you can't. It don't work like that. You can't be trying to do your duty out there and we got problems in here. That's what, messed, that's, what messed, that's what messed the church up because they forgot the duty was on the inside and they stopped going on the outside but all the false doctrine was in the church. All the false doctrine was in the church. All the decision and discord and the hell race was inside the church, and they tried to clean up the world, and they got problems out on the inside. And that's what the problem is today. That's what the problem is with the denomination. They trying to fix the world. Hell, the problem on the inside. The problem ain't on the outside. They doing what they supposed to do. That's why Paul said we, have, we don't judge them that's, out, that's outside the congregation or outside the body of Christ. Hello? Yeah. All right. So y'all want to understand tonight. Examples of the condition and event of things among all the churches in the world since the first planting. Now you listen to this. Since the first planting of them in and by the doctrine of the gospel will give more evidence to the truth of our assertion and a clear account of the matter of fact whose reasons and causes we are to question it too. And because I will confine myself unto the full declaration of the mystery of Christ, I shall not insist on the church of the Jews under the old covenant. But it is known unto all how from their first transgression in making the golden calf. Turn to Genesis chapter 32. Exodus. Quickly, Exodus. Exodus 32. This is the first transgression of the, the first transgression of the church. This is when they downfall start. 32. Genesis 32. This is when the downfall started. Come on, start reading for me, Josh. I mean, Exodus, 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 Exodus. Exodus 32, start reading, Josh. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mountain, uh -huh. the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, uh -huh. Up, make us gods which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us out of the land of Egypt, we want not what is become of him. This is the first transgression of the church of Israel. This is when the apostasy started. From this inception of every building this golden calf, that's going to be their problem all the way through the scriptures. If you turn your Bibles to 1 Kings chapter 11, for 1 Kings chapter 11, now, what year is that? What year is that? What year is that? What, what year is that, young man? There goes your year right there. What year is that? 1491. What, 1490? Thank you very much. B.C. 1491. First time Golden Cows built, right? Right? Mm -hmm. Right? You got your Bible. If you see you got Bible, you got dates up there. The little dude got scope your Bible. You got your dates. In B.C. 1491. We go to 1 Kings chapter 11. We go to 1 Kings chapter 11. This was the, this was the, that was the beginning of the apostasy for Israel. Everybody understand? Amen. Apostasy is a defection from the truth. Everybody understands that. Amen. Everybody should know that word. That word should be common and ordinary for us on Tuesday night. We go to 1 Kings. When we get to 1 Kings, we get to 1 Kings chapter number 11, right? We go to 1 Kings chapter number 11. We go to 1 Kings. We go to 1 Kings. Let's go to chapter. That's when the doubt. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter number 12. 1 Kings chapter number 12. 
First Kings chapter number 12. We see that the first, the golden calf, in, in Exodus chapter 32, right? Yes. That's BC 1491, right? Yes. If we look at, if we look at First Kings chapter 12, are you there? Right. Are you there? Yes. The division of the ten northern tribes from the two southern tribes. God separated the ten northern tribes from the two southern tribes because of the idolatry of Solomon and him marrying many strange wives. This is the splitting up of the twelve tribes of Israel. Jeroboam, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, he gets the ten northern tribes. First transgression with the golden calf, B.C. 1491. Let's read right now, 1 Kings 12, 25. Jeroboam built Shepherd and Mount Ephraim, dwelt therein and went out from this, and, been, and built Penuel. Jeroboam said in his what? Jeroboam, I'm at 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 25. Am I right about it, church? Oh, okay. And Jeroboam said in his heart, or mine, his mind, he's talking to himself. Nobody knows but Jeroboam. We know because it has been recorded on the pages of the Bible. But the people in Shechem, in Mount Ephraim, in Penuel, do not know what's going on in Jeroboam's mind. Or Jeroboam's heart. The Bible tells us Jeroboam said to himself in his mind, This people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem. Then shall the mind of this people turn again, uh oh, unto their Lord, that is, unto Rehoboam, king of Judah, and they shall kill me and go again in Rehoboam, and go again to Rehoboam, king of Judah. Whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold. This is BC 975. So the, they started with the two calves of gold. That's what they worshiped, two calves of gold. That's when the apostasy started. It started in BC 1491 with the Aaron making the golden calf. It continues all the way up to B.C. 900, all through Israel's history, they worship the golden calf. So the apostasy started at the beginning of Israel, just like it started at the beginning of the gospel. Hello? Amen. Everybody understand what I just said? Amen. Everybody understanding what I'm saying? Amen. The same thing that happened at the beginning of Israel, the same thing happened at the beginning of the church. That's all I'm saying. Amen. The apostasy been here. Okay? Amen. All right. <clears throat> From the first transgression of making the golden calf, whereon as God complains, they quickly in a few days turned out of the way. They were continually prone to all sorts of apostasy, and in the issue, the generality of them fell from the promise and covenant of Abraham by their unbelief as... The apostle declares in Romans chapter 11. Okay, now, the same thing happened, Bridget, in all the churches. And we're going to look at it right now. The church of Corinth was planted by the apostle Paul, watered by Apollos, that great evangelist, and none can question but they were fully instructed by them in all the rules of the gospel, which is evident also from the abundance of spiritual gifts, which above any other church, spiritual gifts, no other church had the spiritual gifts that the church of Corinth had. No other church. Did y'all hear what I said? Amen. No other church. 
No other church had the spiritual gifts that the church of Corinth had. They had spiritual gifts above any other church. And there was a reason why that they had more spiritual gifts than any other church. Because they were more prone to relinquish the gospel. So God had to show them more than he showed any other church so that their faith would remain in the gospel. They had above any other church spiritual gifts. But still, within a few years before the writing of his first epistle unto them, which was not above five or six years at the most, many of them fell into that fundamental error, error of denying the resurrection of the dead. Tell me about the first Corinthians 15. It wasn't even there that long. Church wasn't even established that long. Paul established the church. Five or six years later, they said, ain't no resurrection of the dead. That's how fast they apostatized from the church. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. That's how fast they apostatized from the church. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 uh, first, uh, Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 12. Now, it says, this day in apostasy. Not all of them, some of them. And what we need to understand is that in all of these letters, which many of you probably didn't know, weren't paying attention to, did or did not, the problem is not outside the church. It's always in the church. You sitting here, and in your mind, you think that Paul and the rest of the apostles are talking about what's going on in the world. No, they are not. All the letters re refer to events, circumstances, and incidents that was going on in the congregation, Amen. not outside the congregation. And what was happening is those who were supposed to be mature in the congregation were afraid to stand up for the truth in the congregation. I can show you from your Bible to chapter number, from your Bible chapter number 11. See, many, many don't understand this. Many don't understand. Many don't understand. The problem in these letters was the apostasies that was taking place or beginning to take place, seeking to triumph and to conquer the mystery of the truth of the gospel in the congregation. I'm going to sound redundant, 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 because I'm going to say that all through this message. That's all y'all going to be here for a long time. The problem in the churches was in the congregation. And those in the congregation who professed to be mature and understood who was not defending the gospel, the mystery of the truth of the gospel in the congregation. Like I was teaching Sunday, was not executing judgment, but was believing within themselves that they were mature in the faith but they were not defending the gospel in the congregation. Was not executing judgment, declaring individuals guilty or innocent in the congregation. That's what the problem was in the churches. 
You got one in the, in, that's recorded here in the book of 1 Corinthians. And it says, verse number 10, chapter 1. Verse number 10, chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 10. This letter is written to the congregation. It's not written to the world. And this is where we err at in the body of Christ. We will not err here, here. Because it hit me when I was teaching Tuesday, on a Sunday. That's what got Israel in trouble. They wouldn't execute judgment in Israel. Everybody was walking around in Israel as if they did not know what was going on in Israel. Everybody acting like, I don't know what's going on. I ain't got nothing to say. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. That's what got Israel into captivity. That's what Paul wrote to this church, 1 Corinthians, about. That's why he wrote to the Galatians, the Ephesians, the Colossians, about the vain babblings was going on in the congregation. Vain <laughs> philosophy, you want to go through, was going on in the congregation. Not outside the congregation. Many of us have not understood. So I want to make it plain to us that you're just as guilty as the individuals that are causing discord and decision in the congregation and you're not executing judgment and knowing what's going on. You're just as guilty. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 10. Paul says to the Corinthians, I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing. Not just the preacher. And I was telling Charles this. Charles, many think Dennis is always into a controversy with somebody in the congregation. He always going through something with somebody in the congregation. Why? Dennis is the only one standing up for truth in the congregation. Every time Dennis have a controversy with somebody, it's always concerning the word and those in the congregation. And many looked at it, he always into something with somebody. About what? The word and their conduct in the congregation. And many of you sit here and believe, he always into something. There's something wrong. Yes, with those who don't want to comply with the word in the congregation. Paul said, there was one person down there that stood up in this congregation. One person that stood up and knew something was going on in the congregation. Paul said, I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions, no heresies, no schisms among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind, in the same judgment. Paul said, y'all not together in unity down there at all. Say, y'all are not in unity. Y'all are not in the, y'all not in the same man, the same thing, y'all not in the same judgment. That's what we read Sunday. 
We read it in Deuteronomy 8, judgment. We read it in the book of uh, Zephaniah, judgment. And we read it when our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said, we have passed over judgment and the love of God. And we have. Because you sit there, knowingly, unknowingly, consciously or unconsciously, understanding or not understanding, ignorant and not ignorant, Dennis is always into a, I don't care who come to the narrow hold those ministry. He always have a problem with somebody in the congregation. Concerning what? Conduct in the word. But many of you in your mind, in your action, separate from me towards those individuals who have problems with the word or their conduct where at? Instead of joining with me. Against those who have a problem with the word or their conduct where at? One person in Corinth. One person. Read it again. I beseech you, brother, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all, not one, not one person, it don't say one person, speak the same thing. What is the same thing we're supposed to be speaking, Jobs? What is the same thing we're supposed to be speaking, Cleo? What is the same thing we're supposed to be speaking, Jobs? The faith and gospel. The, uh, the, the, the faith and the gospel. 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 That's what we're supposed to be speaking. All of us. It don't say one individual. Read it again. <clears throat> I beseech you, brother, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing. There be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind, in the same judgment. Against who, Bridget? The world? Against the world? Against the world? No. Against those in the congregation. Not against the world. Against those in the world. In the world? No, I ain't talking about the world. I'm talking about the congregation. So am I the only one who's supposed to be, uh, am I the only one approved in here? Am I the only one being tested in here? Am I the only one being tried in here? Am I the only one going through trials in here with those who are of heresies, who have opinions in the congregation? One person in Corinth. There's one person in Corinth that stood up and it's recorded in verse number 11. For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are the house of Cleo. Hey, Paul, they not standing up with truth down there. The house of Colleen came and told Paul, Paul, they're not standing up with truth down there. They're not in the same judgment, the same mind. The house of Colleen was in agreement with Paul the preacher. And they told on the ones that was in the congregation who was not standing up for truth. Read it again. Verse number 10. Now, I beseech you, brother, he write to the congregation. He ain't write to the house of Kodum. He ain't write to the house 
of Chloe. He's not writing to that house because they told. They wrote the letter to Paul and say, Paul, there's divisions here in this church. Paul, they don't say the same thing. Paul, they don't have the same mind. Paul, they're not in the same judgment. And Chloe wrote back and told Paul. Apostasy had already begun. For it had been declared unto me, of you, my brethren, by them which are of the household, Chloe, that there are contentions among you. It's the same book. Then we get to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 19. He said, For there must be heresies among you, church of Corinth, in the congregation. In the congregation. 1 Corinthians 11, 19 is talking about in the congregation. That those that's in the congregation is going to be approved. And that's been the problem in the church all the time. Everybody knew what was going on in this church. That's why you go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and he tells them. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11, he said. Amen. He said, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, it is reported commonly there is fornication among you. And I'm going to go through the book of Corinthians. And he keeps saying what? I wish I had a window. He ain't saying the word. He ain't saying the word. He said, among you. Paul, riding with Glenn, knowing Glenn is in fornication. Paul is just as guilty as Glenn. He might as well go get him some, cheat on his wife. You know your fellow members in sin, and you don't say nothing in here. You are a heretic. Amen. You know sin is going on. That ain't my business, which I'm going to address that Sunday and show you. I'm going to give you scripture that tells you you're guilty. And you may not be in the body of Christ. And I keep telling you that because you sit here. Don't mean you're going. You may be a heretic. Because your opinion may be, I'm minding my own business. I ain't saying nothing. That's an opinion, isn't it? He keeps saying, among you. Among you. Not the world. He said, among you. And many probably would have still been here if among us some one of you or all of you would have stood up with me in the rebuking and the reproving of them when they was in their sin. So them gone might be your fault for not standing for that good thing, that faith, the gospel. Because you did not speak. You did not judge. Want to read it again? I'm going to read it 110 times. 1 Corinthians 1 10. I beseech you, brother, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you. He ain't talking about the world. He ain't say, uh, he, he ain't say out in the world. He said, among you. He ain't said nothing about out in the world. He said, he said in the congregation. And that's what the problem always has been, in the congregation. Many not opening their mouth and saying nothing in the congregation. Being silent, turning the head, looking the other way, like politicians, like you don't know what's going on in the congregation. 
and taking side with those whom you have affection for when you know they in sin, whether they wives, husbands, spouses, children or not, in the congregation. Any of your children or wives probably not here. Because if we're not standing together in the congregation, too much division in the congregation. One man standing up and that's the preacher preaching the truth. One man standing up and that's the preacher judging them for their conduct in the congregation and their profession of being a Christian and nobody else saying nothing else. Among you now, I told you, I'm going to go through this. We're going to teach you a carnal Christian. You may be a carnal Christian on your way to hell and don't know it. Carnal Christians don't say nothing. They cowards. Amen. He said, ain't none of my business. I don't want nobody saying nothing to me. I don't want nobody mad at me. So I'm not going to say nothing. I don't need to say nothing. They know what they're doing. Yes, you do. Need to say something. I'm going to read it again. <clears throat> now, I beseech you, brother, we're at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. By the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all, not just the preacher. All them write this just to the preacher. So all of y'all down there, speak. He told them in Ephesians, speak truth every man to his neighbor. We read in the book of Zephaniah, speak truth. Where at? Outside? No, he didn't. Zephaniah was prophesying, he prophesied to Israel. As a matter of fact, let's turn over to Ezekiel, let's turn over to Zephaniah chapter 7. And I'm going to define these words. Come Sunday, they give you the full definition of them so you can understand. One of them is Shaphat, the other one is Mispot. Both of them come from the same, uh, uh, mis, mis, Mispot is the derivative of Shaphat. Go to Zephaniah chapter 7. This is what the problem is. Y'all want to be a preacher always. Somebody always mad at the preacher. Y'all look around, somebody leave and go to something what the preacher said. Oh, Zechariah chapter 7. Preacher is the only one preaching to you? Huh? Preacher only one that's standing for the truth? Oh, you don't want nobody mad at you? Oh, I don't want no trial. I don't want no fire. So I don't say nothing. I mind my own business. That's a carnal Christian on their way to hell. That's a carnal Christian on their way to hell. I don't say nothing. I just mind my own business. I let the preacher handle it. That's a carnal Christian. That's a heretic who has an opinion. Because the Bible don't say that. You show me the script where it says that, and I will repent and eat the page. But you show me the Bible where it told you, Jocks, come here, sit down, among us, don't say nothing. When you see sin and hear sin, you mind your own business. Show me that scripture. I will repent and eat the page right now or whenever you find it. Where it told you, among us, in the congregation, to mind your own business. Find that scripture and show me. Preach always judging somebody, rebuking somebody, reproving somebody. You're supposed to be doing the same thing too. Ye all speak the same thing. I'm supposed to be the example you follow on how to do it in using the word. You're supposed to be doing the same thing. But all the weight is on the preacher. Because I'm not getting involved in that. Well, 
nobody mad at me. Well, nobody said nothing to me. <coughs> and then they tell you, tell them one time, twice, second half the initial, you treat them like a heathen. After that, you're out of here. Among you in the congregation, the scripture. You thinking you say you sitting there thinking you free, you ain't just much sin as the individual that's in sin. Because you're not doing your duty either. You sin it too. In the congregation. Zechariah chapter 7. Zechariah chapter 7. Verse number 8. We there? Amen. And the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah, saying, Thus speak the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment. Show mercy and compassions every man to his brother. Just tell me to do it. Tell every man to execute true judgment. Amen. Every man. They just tell me to do it. And they just tell Zachariah to do it. The word of the Lord told Zachariah to tell them to do the same thing Zachariah was doing. So mercy and compassion only to those that are suffering in fellowship with Christ. Them only ones get mercy and compassion. You don't show mercy and compassion to wolves, do you? Amen. Do you show, do you show mercy and compassion to a wolf? No. What do you do to a wolf? All right. Yeah. Man, no. You show mercy and compassion to a hypocrite? Amen. You show mercy and compassion to a rebellious goat? Mm. No. You don't show mercy and compassion to a rebellious sheep. You show mercy and compassion to those that are suffering for righteousness' sake. You should show mercy. Dennis, you want to elaborate on it? Towards me, who are suffering because everybody blame everything on me. Because it seems like I'm the only one who's in the fire here. Don't nobody else blame y'all for nothing. Every time you look around, there's a problem with Dennis, with somebody in the congregation. Why? Is Dennis the only one in the congregation that's executing true judgment and standing for the truth, the good thing, the gospel, and the faith? Is that why? Because I'm rebuking somebody for their conduct or their misunderstanding and false teaching and doctrine of the Bible. Because that's the only thing it is. It's not because I raped their wives or their children or shot, broke in their house and stole nothing. It's always concerning the word. Why are you not going through the same thing? The Bible commands you to do the same thing that I am to do. You are Christian like I'm a Christian. You a believer like I'm a believer. Oh, I'm supposed to take it because I'm the preacher? It don't say that in this Bible. Where did you get that idea from? You're a heretic. This devil suggested it to you. You're not valid for the truth. You haven't done it. That's what I've been trying to tell you. You may be on your way to hell too. No cowards go to hell. You had four score priests. And they were vowed. And they told the king, we don't care because you came. We don't care because you sought the Lord and you prospered. And you were strengthened exceedingly. We don't care what you don't built here in Israel. We don't care what you have done. We don't care nothing you about being you being no garden. Got all these garden, these pretty things set up for Israel. You get up out of this doggone uh, uh, temple. You ain't got no business in here. As a robber wasn't there by himself. I said, as a robber wasn't there by himself. Zechariah chapter 7, verse number 8. And the word of the Lord, see, that's how weak minded. That's 
how subtle and strong Satan is over your mind. Because many of you have thought that. Don't worry, that you're not supposed to suffer persecution. Among us in the church is stand with the preacher, speak the same thing, speak the same thing, and have the same judgment. Give you a perfect example. Look at the many times we've been down in the studio. How many times he rebuked Cleo? How many times Cleo rebuked him? You don't have the same judgment with me against Mixon. Mixon don't have the same judgment with me against Cleo. They had the same judgment against me, though. He only rebuked us about it. Same judgment I have against them. Y'all should have the same judgment against them too. Hey man, when are y'all gonna come down there and the pastor be able to go, uh, when the pastor gonna be able to go in there and just preach the word of God and not to keep giving y'all the same instructions all the time? Y'all should have been saying the same thing to them too. Y'all should have been speaking the same thing and had the same judgment too. Paul, Glenn, Charles, Mike, Bridget, and JD, you, Carolyn, y'all go the most. I'm about. Y'all need to take this more serious. Y'all need to take this be more diligent. This is the work of the Lord. Y'all men need to be more diligent, more serious about what y'all doing. Y'all should have a pastor upset like that. Y'all know he's supposed to come here preaching, not do nothing else. Y'all need to tighten y'all game. Did you know one of you say, he always going off. Every time we come down, he going off. Why? Look at that cotton up. The word says he's supposed to be diligent. Perfect. And all you do, do it all heartily to the Lord. Supposed to be working for God. They like they're working for me. That's right. If it's a situation, 
where it is not recorded in the word of God for you to do. I will tell you, no, that's not your place. But what I'm telling you tonight is your place. So what, you, what we're learning tonight is where I come in at and where I don't come in at. Okay? Amen. I know you do. I hear you. I hear you. What you want? We hear a lot. I mean, I have heard a lot of uh, times when we preach in your word. I, I have heard you say many a times before we make any decision, say anything, bring it to you first. Yes. So therefore, it's taking it to you first. It's just like it's not taking it to our brother. Well, Be because why I want you to bring it to me first? Yes, to make sure it's all decent and all. There you go. Because, because if you don't, you'll be talking. All right, I'm fit. Because you don't, you're going to be saying like Carolyn. But if you believe, you listen very carefully to what I'm saying to everyone. If you get scripture, and I tell y'all this all the time. If you don't want in your scripture, and you hear some sin, and you don't want in your scripture. Mm -hmm. You see in that scripture, that you can take that scripture to him and he's wrong. You take it to him with that scripture. Yes, you do. That's what it tells you to do. It tells you execute true judgment. You, I ain't even got to know. I ain't even got to know. If your brother's overtaken in a fault, y'all know that scripture. Mm -hmm. Ye which are spiritual. Oh, ain't nobody in here spiritual? Ain't nobody in here spiritual? Now would you tell me nobody in here spiritual? I preach that all the time. I know what's going on. But I preach that all the time. You was our you which are spiritual. Restore such a one. We have, we have to make sure that we have the facts, the truth. I don't care why that's on you. No, I'm saying before we take it to our brother. I, that's on you. We have to have facts. We have to know everything. That's the only reason you take it. We have to know everything. No, you don't have to know every little small detail where they went in the time and everything. No. No, I'm not speaking of that. But what are you speaking of? I'm speaking of before we take it to our brother, we should know what we're talking about before we accuse them of something that they're not even doing. Oh, um, you're not gonna go to them then. That's obvious, Carolyn. No. What you're what you're saying, Carolyn, you're let me let me say it again because this is what you're not understanding. Execute true judgment. That means they have did something that the word of God has not said to do, and you know it. Thank you. So we can get it plain and simple. That means they have done something. The word of God said not do. This man, I know that honor bear is in fornication with this woman. Finna go and dress him on this. Okay, everybody understand? Yes. I know I'm in the back of the church. I mean, I'm, I'm back here getting some coffee, and I hear Donald whispering to JD. Uh, concerning something Dennis said and did, and Dennis not there, you back body, you tail back. Excuse me, you shouldn't be speaking about the pastor like that. Excuse me, you shouldn't be talking about Bridget like that. I don't let it happen. Do I, J.D.? Do I, Mike? Nope. Do I, try? No. Nope. Do I, Cleo? Nope. Do I, Miss? I'm not letting it happen. Do I, Paul? Nope. I'm not letting it happen. I'm not letting it happen. Execute true judgment. And Jesus said, judge what? Righteous judgment. I mean, with the word of God, right? Amen. Not after the flesh. Amen. We don't judge after the flesh. No, we don't. Amen. We judge a righteous judgment. We judge a righteous judgment. That's what got Israel in trouble. They did not execute true judgment among each other. That's all I'm teaching y'all. If you listen very carefully right now, you are born again, you can. Mm -hmm. Say it one more time. Mm -hmm. If you are born again, you can. 
I'm going to say it one more time. Because this is what y'all got to understand. It's not you going to be doing a righteous judge. It's going to be the spirit in you that's going to be doing a righteous judge. So if you're born again, that's all I'm telling If you're born again, you can do it. You have the ability to do it. Because it is not you which do it. It's my Father which is in you, Jesus said, Bridget. Now what they y'all got to know? They got nothing to do with you at all. You ain't, you ain't supposed to be worried about you when you go to do it. Amen. You ain't going to be worried about no details and, and, and make sure I got the facts and all this. That's carnal. Because if it's spirit-led, it's going to be spontaneous. Because you've been made willing. That's what willing means, spontaneous. Yes, sir. Um, I recall when I was being, uh, you know, guilty of something when I first came to the ministry. Uh, and, and you brought it up part about the studio. And um, I brought it to you first. And about the, the time, why, why did it take so long consistently, consistently every time we go there? And I just, you know, felt the better job to be done. So after I discussed it with you, then I started to discuss it with uh, Creo and Mike. But what I, what I did was, after a period of time, I stopped saying anything. That's just one incident I use. It's been yeah. incidents in there where you yeah. guys ain't been doing nothing to each other. I say it all the time. Right. Y'all don't judge among each other. Y'all don't. Among each other, y'all do not judge. Yeah. Well, y'all don't. Y'all don't judge among each other. In this small congregation we have, no, y'all don't. Y'all do not execute true judgment with each other. Y'all don't walk in truth with each other. Too close. Let them get away with anything. I don't. I think you're rich. Don't. I ain't the only one in the church. I didn't preach you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. There you go, Bridget. You ain't the only one in the church. Tell them, Bridget. Right. I ain't the only one. We all do. We all definitely walk in truth. We're, we're definitely doing that more and more. The conversations we have. Yes, we are. Scripture. We're doing it more and more. That's what she said. That's a good confession. Mm -hmm. scripture. I mean, it's just when we see something and say something, it has to be a word of God. Must be. Word of God. Mm -hmm. It has to be among us. Verse number 8. The word of the Lord came unto Zechariah, saying, Thus speak, thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment, show mercy and compassion every man to his brother. I'm just teaching the word of God and tell you what this is your duty. This is what you're supposed to be doing. Amen. This is our apostasies and divisions and decisions and discourse started in the church. Amen. I'm just teaching you the word of God. This is your duty. I didn't tell you to do this. Oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, the poor. Let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. <laughs> but I told y'all that's what got Israel in trouble. Free for you. Pulled away the shoulder. Don't tell me what to do. My own business. Stop their ears that they should not hear. They made their hearts as an adamant stone. Lest they should hear the law and the words which the Lord of afflictions, right, mm -hmm. sent in his spirit or attitude through the former prophets for that reason. 
So they cried. Whew. He said, I'm not going to hear you. You didn't hear me. Zechariah chapter 8, verse number 16. These are the things, these are the things that ye shall do. So from, from 8.30, February, to March 18, 2014, everybody know that's in here. This is what you should do. I know told nobody not to do what the word says. As long as you're doing this right here, I, I, I never taught that. Speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. Every man. Same thing Paul said. Same thing Jesus said. Speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. Every man. Me too. I'm your neighbor, ain't I, JD? Amen. Am I your neighbor? Amen. Am I your neighbor? Yes. Am I your neighbor? Yes. Am I your neighbor? Speak ye every man the truth. The truth. The truth, not, not, on, not heretic, not opinion. Execute the judgment of truth and peace in your gates, and let none of you imagine evil in your heart against his neighbor and not speaking the truth to him. And love no false hope. For all these things, for all these are things that I hate. Back to 1 Corinthians. And this is how apostasy started in the church. This is how apostasy, decisions, discourse start in the church. It's always among you. That's where they start at. Verse number 10. Verse number 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 10 again. For not now I beseech you, brethren. By the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing. But there be no divisions among you. It went for Paul too. It goes for me too. That you be perfectly joined together. Perfectly joined together. Perfectly joined together. Perfectly joined together, perfectly joined together in the same mind. Perfectly joined together in the same judgment. How are we going to do that? How are we going to be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment? How are we going to speak truth every man? How are we going to be perfect? How, how can we be? How can all of us in here who have different minds be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment? What? We can't. How? How can we all be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment? Thank you. Same faith, same gospel, same good thing. We can be perfectly joined together in what that word of God says. When that word of God said, and we be perfectly joined together in that word of God, you don't stand up in the middle of us, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven degrees, and you don't stand there and say, I don't see it like that. But then you the one that got to go, because all one, two, three, four, five said it like that, and you don't see it like that. Because that's your homie. Oh, what? It no oh, it should? It should be no place. Oh, it should? No. Oh, okay. We on the same line. Perfect. Yeah. And how, how are we going to do that? With the word. It's the only way. That's the only way. That's the only way. The, the, the most perfect example I can give about that thing about rebuke. All y'all should have been telling everybody, I don't know what your problem is. That's what he's supposed to do. That's what the word said. The problem is not with Dennis. The problem is with you. Everybody should have been. Everybody should have spoke that. Everybody should have been perfectly joined together in that and in that judgment. 
everybody. I don't care if the individual called you uh, and didn't nobody else know about it, you should have told them. I can't say Bridget was perfectly joined together with me in that, in that one incident. Even when, it, when Andrea would call her, she was still perfectly joined together with me and I was not even with Bridget. Paul's <coughs> wife may not. Paul's wife don't come in no more. Paul's supposed to be perfectly joined together with me in judgment against her. Every one of y'all is supposed to be perfectly, ju perfectly joined together with Paul in judgment with her. Anybody that don't left this ministry, y'all y'all supposed to be perfectly joined together with that word. Amen. Many of y'all don't look at it as you're going to be perfectly joined together with Dennis because that's what he preached out the word. No. Mm. Bridget is supposed to be perfectly, Bridget is perfectly joined together with me against a mother with that word. Mm -hmm. Against her sisters with that word. Perfectly joined together in the same thing and the same judgment. How? With the word. That's the only way. That's the only way. Other than that, you got a bunch of piss off. That's all you got in the congregation. That's all you got is a bunch of heretics. Other than that, you ain't got no but a bunch of heretics in the congregation. Right? That's all you got, a bunch of people with a bunch of opinions. Nobody agree with the word. Only person agree with the word and say it like that is the preacher. I don't say it like that. Well, you're a heretic. What you here for? What's your purpose of being here? What do you come here for? To learn. You don't come in to teach. You don't come in to voice an opinion. You don't come here to voice an opinion. You, what are you here for tonight? Oh, you are? Not, I don't want to know your opinion. What are you here for? For you to, 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 to relate to me what you think about what I teach? Seriously. Is that what you come here for? So you can relate to me what you think about what I am commanded to teach jobs? You want to let me know what you think about what God has given me to relate to you? To teach you? You want to tell me what your opinion is about that? I don't need you here for that. That's why I left the Baptist church, because I didn't want no opinion. I guess that's why you left, or I don't know. I guess you thought I was, your opinion was going to be received. What you come here for? What, do anybody, what are they coming here for? I am a Bible teacher. Do you see me up here hooping with a roll ball, running and hollering? I'm here. <laughs> your hair too. <laughs> That's your opinion, not you. <laughs> One reason you come in here, Free Jesus, that I want to hear the word of God taught in its simplicity. That's the only purpose for you to here. To see, to see, am I in the way? Amen. Am I, am I a member of the kingdom that I profess to be a, be a? Her only purpose is being coming here, Regina's daughter. Regina got her coming here. So that she can find out if she is one of the elect. Because the only way she's going to know whether she is elected and chosen by God before the foundation of the world is the hearing of the gospel. Amen. That's the only way she's going to know whether she's a child of God or not. What? Amen. That's the only way she's going to know. Am I a child of God or not? She got the hearing of the gospel. That's the only way you're going to know. The faith come out here and hear about the word of God. You say by grace through <laughs> now she gonna know that she truly believes this or not. She gotta hear it. And if God has birthed Himself in her, birthed His Spirit in her, touched her soul, she know. But how is she gonna know she's not here to what? Hear, God. hear it. That's what's wrong with the word. They don't told her the apostasy. The first person to preach. Free will was origin. He's the first person to preach free will. 
He's the one who brought free will into the church. His name's O R I G E. He's the one who brought free will into the church. That's when the, that's when free will came in. He's the proponent of free will. He's the first one to preach free will. You can ask the Baptist that you don't know. His name is Origin. You can read all of his rap. He's the first one to preach free will. He's the first one. I said the first one. He's the first one to preach free will. Free will was not taught in church until he broke it up. And that's when the apostasy started. Everybody starts saying, because this is easy. Ain't it? Yeah, if this free will, I can live. I can live like I want to live till I get to be 65 and now I can't jump no more and dance no more. I might as well go to church. I'm getting ready to die anyway. I ought to go up like that. And that's why they took it. Because it's easy. I can live all my life in sin. Now I'm 75 years old. I'm ready to die. I make a deathbed confession. I had no obedience since I came out of my mother's womb up to 75. Now I'm getting ready to die. I'm going to my deathbed. I'm going to confess Christ and go to heaven. You crazy as hell. That's what Origen taught. That's what he taught. History. That's history. That's history. Biblical history is just regular. He's the first one to talk free will. He brought it into the church. And you got your Arminianism, your Pelagianism, and so on, so on, and trickle over that. He's the first one to brought free will in the church. Deathbed confession. All that crazy stuff. Because it's easy. I can live all day long. All I have to do before I die is accept Christ. That's all I got to do. I don't care what time, I don't care what time in my life that I do it. I don't care. All I got to do is be on my deathbed and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. <laughs> well, when did he start that? Well, I don't know what year it was, but he was the one who brought it in the church. I don't know exactly what year, but he is the man who taught it. You go read about origin and tell you what year. I don't know what year. I don't know exactly what year. I know he's the one who did it. I don't know the exact year, but the year, is, the year is not important. He introduced a hellish doctrine in the congregation, and it spread through the congregation. And so now I'm preaching predestination. You don't bring it here free will. He like it. You need to go start your church. You get him something. He's, you, he teach you and learn it all. He dies off. He don't talk him. He dies off. He don't talk him. And now it's going to spread all over the world. Now you got a hellish doctrine everywhere. That's how it started. Well, who was working in him? Me. That's what Paul is telling them. This is what I'm trying to show your how to get started in the church. You don't nip it in the bud and spray it. We have decision and discord in the church. That's why Jesus gave all of Jesus gave it to us in the 18th chapter. We have not done it. But I'm not going to be one of those denominations or one of those heresies that do that. No. I'm going to let you know where your area is. And that's my job to show you your sin. And you're sinning and you don't even know it. Because you don't want your feelings hurt. Many of you don't want your feelings hurt. You don't want the fire. That's why Paul said, it must be among you that they which are elect may be manifest. And I'm seeing it all in the scripture that I'm showing it to you. This was going on in the Corinthian church. And that's what he told them, didn't he? Go back over to five, quickly. Go back over to five. Back over to five. Amen. He didn't say this was going on nowhere else. He said, it is reported. Well, somebody told Bridget. Mm -hmm. It is reported. Bridget, somebody told. They didn't have no newspapers. Well, who told it? We know who told it. Chloe told it. He said, man, they down here. This dude sleeping with his, his, his father. Sleeping with his uh Step up. Down here doing everything. They say ain't no resurrection.
resurrection no more. Paul, you taught us resurrection. Soon as you left, Bridget come out and say, man, you don't believe no resurrection, you. You believe Paul, you believe a man raised from the dead. I left all my heretic, I left all my heresy at, at, at home. I don't know if y'all know the man, y'all know the man who, uh, I don't know his name, but he be on 36. He don't show his face when he read his Bible. He was on 36 today. The what? The what? The what? Whatever his name is. <laughs> Just say hand. The what? This is what he said. He said, the account of Genesis is a myth. Yeah. Listen to this damned fool. He, he can't never be forgiven for sin. He gonna go straight to hell. He said the account of Genesis is a myth. He said that I know you don't believe that you come from the dust of the ground. Then he went into archaeology. He said the reason that they put us in the ground because that's the best place to put a dead person. What? He said, you didn't come from the ground. He said, now this is, this is stupid. I don't know if you hear this. He said that we were not, we did not come from the ground. Some of the scientists say that the same minerals that's in the ground is in us. He said, now you, it is. You got copper in you, you got lead in you, so that you didn't know that. You didn't know that. You and him got some study. You got copper in you, lead in you. So he said, and you knew you had those minerals in the body, right? Mm -hmm. Guess how he said they got in you? From the food you eat. <laughs> he said because there's minerals in the food. Duh, since there's minerals in the food, when you eat the food, the minerals get in you. What in that? How do that get into an individual's chromosome? Why? That's why I said I want you to hear that. When I heard that, I said, he is stupid. Because you knucklehead Jew, he is a stupid man. Ain't no minerals in Mike's chromosome. Mike got X, Y. Jenny got X, X. The determining factor is that Michael Weather's going to be a male or female. The determining factor is in Michael. That's where the child gets their name from. Mm -hmm. At conception, you got your name. When you conceive, that's when she got her name. Armfield. When she conceived. And his chromosome, he got, how many of them you got? 23? 23, right? 23, yeah. She got 23 too? 46. I, 23 and 23, I'm just saying they got 23 and 3 uh, chromosome, 46 chromosome, but the determining factor is in the XY chromosome. That's why the child get the father's name. Now, she got your blood in her, and his blood in her. The only one that ever had singular blood was Jesus. Because there was no male factor involved. There was no male factor involved. I'm going to go back and do the DNA series. I found my papers today. I'm going to go back and do the DNA series all over again. If you have the chromosomes of Jesus Christ, you will execute true judgment. You ain't no punk. That's why I said about them priests, they were valid men. That's why I said in Jeremiah 9 3, they was not what for the truth on the earth. I wish I had a wooden document. 
Sad is the contrast between Noah going forth with joy and Noah drunken and exposing his nakedness between the whole earth of one lip and one speech in great Babylon with tongues confounded and his son separated between the first full joy of the regenerate soul and the experience which follows of gifts misused and curses treasured up. Or to trace it without between the church as it was with the multitude which believed was of one heart and one soul, neither saying any that aught that he possessed was his own, and they had all things common. And the church as it is now, with the departure from the faith, men giving heed to seducing spirits, doctrine of devils, same thing I'm talking about, I was going to these scriptures, speaking lies and hypocrisy, with conscious fear, lovers of themselves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, having withheld a form of godliness without the power. But such is the fruit and fall even of regenerate man. Three chief forms of failure I described. First Noah's, then Nimrod's, then Great Babylon. Each differs in form with the gradual advance in crime. In the first two, good things are misapplied. In Noah, we have blessings external to him misused to his own hurt. In Nimrod, personal gifts are perverted to injure others. In Babel, we have no more open apostasy and a systematic departure from the right position with untrue and creature things substituted for truth and self-exaltation self instead of God's glory. In each regenerate soul, all this may be first misuse of privilege lead to spiritual intoxication. The bind, some precious grace of Christ in us tends, if misused, to make us forget ourselves and to expose our nakedness. The failure of the ruling mind within given occasion to to the other thoughts in us to show themselves. Thus do our failings help to discover to us what different minds after regeneration yet remain in us, some of which we learn not now must be judged as being only subtle forms of the condemned old man. Shem, the man which loves contemplation. Japheth, that which purposes and performs true outward service are each recognized. But Ham is cursed in his seed. The fruits of knowing and not doing are foreseen and reprobated. Nevertheless, out of Ham, the evil grows. Nimrod, a form of life, the fruit of mere intellect, aspires to rule and to be the master mind. Gifts of knowledge claim a place in us which God cannot approve. The result of, which is a kingdom of Babel, that is, some rule or rulers which cannot sanctify, after which Babel itself grows up, some form which, though great and approved in man's eyes and God's, is simply confusion. We build up likeness of truths within. We strengthen and fortify some opinion or imagination, or we call it edification. But self is at work, usurping the Lord's place, self love. Thoughts of self-exaltation to make us a name, or indeed perverting everything. Thus a tower of pride springs up within, which we may hope will be a means to reach to heaven. For in building this battle, we are self-deceived. That's building up self. And many be seeking right things in a wrong and self-invented way. It's not the way of the word. But which will only draw us from the true high ground of life, that's the gospel, leave us inwardly distracted and full of confusion. You're still in darkness because you're worshiping of self. That's what he's saying. All this may be and is within after we are through grace truly regenerate. For no evil is without. The seed of which is not within. It may be hid. That's what I'm talking about. That's indwelling sin, right? Yes. Right? As the night is hid in the day, if the light of heaven rules us, yet the root of self remains, and in self lies the germ of a babel, a beast, an antichrist, ready to make the temple of God his seat if we depart from the cross of Jesus Christ. But the inward kingdom is not seen by all. The outward manifestation of it, therefore, may be more useful here. To trace it then without, 
Noah fall come first. This is the failure of the true elect through the abuse of good gifts. Noah's care in the cleansed earth is divine. In the spirit of Adam and before the flood, there is before generation. There is before regeneration. Noah was no planter. There, his work was the ark. There, day and night, instead of planting the vine, he was cutting down the high trees, as the work of the elect in the world is to lay the axe to the root of men's pride. Mm -hmm. To lay them low, that by the experience of death they may reach a better life. But in the church, regenerate man has other work. There, the vine is to be trained, pruned, cultivated. There is precious juice which gladdens God and man, is to be drunk with thankfulness and joy to God's glory. Mm -hmm. Yet this may be misused. Has the cup of blessing never been taken and perverted to men's own condemnation? Alas, not a fruit like Noah have prof profaned that wine which was given in love to make us forget our poverty. The truth of Christ is suffering for us, carnally received, used as a reprieve to the flesh, has come back as a curse to those who have so regarded it. For the grace of God being turned into the sinners, whose men have but eaten and drunk their own damnation. While even Christ's suffering in us may be perverted if a minister to our pride or vain self-satisfaction. If instead of walking in watchfulness and prayer, this is everything I've been teaching y'all for the last two months, men put some gift in the place of meekness and humble. If they do not watch and keep their garments, the result is always this. They have walked naked and men have seen their shame. Two things are brought out by this fall, sin and some, grace and others, of the church's children. Ham not only sees but tells the shame of wrong without an attempt to place so much as a rag on that nakedness, which as the sin of one so near to him should have been in his own shame. Shem and Japheth would not look upon it, but walking backward, a path not taught by nature, but grace covered their father's nakedness. Mm -hmm. So is it yet. This is what you want me to read. We see what is akin to us. The evil have, the evil have an eye for evil while the good and loving are engaged of acts of charity. Thus, he whose work it is to bring light, to bring to light the hidden things of darkness by the failure of one often <clears throat> reveals another's heart. The church's, uh, the church's fall, the misuse of gift and song is made the occasion of stripping the self deceiver bare. Men sit in judgment on the evil in the church, full of impatience and self, laying all iniquity bare, not waiting for the righteous judge, little thinking that while they are judging evil, God by the evil may be trying and judging them, or that the spirit which exposes other sin may be far more hateful to him than some misuse of privileges. What's the point? I understand this perfectly. What are you saying that this is what I am doing? That's what I want to understand. This is, I'm asking you, this is what you see in me? Yes, I, I'm speaking my times, but the experience that I have had with you, speaking of me, is when the gift that you have mm -hmm. has been misused, you know, it's times that you be, I can come to you with a situation, and mm -hmm. that's why I shut down and don't call this mm -hmm. because I think you, you, your patience, you, your compassion is very short with the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to speak for everybody. Okay. Else. It's just like when we use our last little incident we had when I spoke and asked you about the 11, 11 p.m. thing. What and it went about the schedule of last week, the last little incident we went in. And you and I was talking, and then when you were speaking and saying what you had to say, when I began to speak, you hung the phone up on me. No! <laughs> wait, 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 wait. No! 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 I did not hang the phone up on you. Who hung the phone up? I don't know. I thought you hung it up. Then I hang the phone, I said, oh, well, she pissed off at 
we shown the phone up. And I said, but then why you didn't call me back? I left it alone. Well, you know why I didn't call you back? Why? I hit a history of you hanging the phone up on people. See what I mean? What, what is that? 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 That's it. And see, and see, and see, see what I mean? Why y'all think I'm teaching this? See what I mean? See what I mean? She didn't even call the pastor back and ask him. Dennis, why did you hang the phone up on me? Why you got a phone when you be trying to call? You don't have to holler at all. You got to have a whole lot of long self-implication with us. You got that, that's you, that's your gift. You got, you, you got to use this. Now you be hollering at them bootlegged preachers and all them uh, anti-crisis when you teach them. They need to be a holiday. We don't do some kind of time. <laughs> <laughs> we just stand. We have a one-on-one talk. Me and you going to have a talk. We going to have to. Me and you. Me and you go have a one God help me today. I'm gonna knock Bridget down. Lord help me with this one. Then all you had to do was Dennis, why you hang up? Bridget, I didn't hang up. When I looked up, I was talking to you. So you would know. I was talking, I was trying Bridget, 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 Bridget. <laughs> I said, oh, Lord, you want to go get me that mission on home back then? I go straight up to prayer. And I, 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 I never hang up on them. I don't know who you, who you got that from. I hang up on people. If I hang up, listen, you got to, this is what y'all don't understand. Discernment. Huh? Discernment. Y'all don't understand. Discernment. Y'all don't understand. I, I know y'all don't understand. I keep trying to explain it to you. Y'all think y'all understand. You don't. You can't be meek and compassionate to wolves and shit. To wolves and bats. No. To wolves and bats. You don't be meek and compassionate. You don't be, I'm gonna be compassionate to no goat. No wolf. No bear. Like what David was doing out there with the bear. Okay, bear, let's get away from this shit. He killed the bear. I heard you. Move back. No. I can talk to you about yourself. All sheep, not the same sheep. The way I talk to you, Bridget, and the way I talk to you, Carolyn, I would never talk to you like that. The way I talk to you, Bridget, the way I talk to you, Carolyn, I would never talk to Marita like that. The way I talk to Mike, I would never talk to you like that, darling. The way I talk to Cleo, I would never talk to you. I don't talk to all the sheep the same. No, I don't. Some of you sheep like the butt. Some of you mix it, mix it ain't no butt. Some of you sheep like the butt. Mm -hmm. uh, that's right. <laughs> and that's why I talk to you like that. Some of you sheep don't butt at all. I don't talk to Charles like I talked to. Like I talked to Mike. I don't talk to Charles like I talk to none of y'all in here. Charles don't butt. Bridget butt. Carolyn butt. Mike a butt. I don't talk to JD like I talk to Bridget and Carolyn. They don't butt. Y'all butts. So I got to talk to you the way you are. All sheep is not the same. <clears throat> I don't talk to Paul and Glenn the same. I don't talk, I don't, I don't talk to Alma Bell like I talk to Glenn. Sometimes I have to just leave Glenn alone and let Glenn fester. I mean, come to himself, and he does. Because Glenn got pride. But it's not a <clears throat> pride like that. It's a subtle, hidden pride. It's a pride like I don't want nobody to know. Okay, okay, because oh. So I have to talk to Glenn and wait. Hey, hey, Glenn, hey, stop that, stop. Because Glenn have a problem. He goes, okay, 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 okay. And he ain't hearing nothing. And he ain't hearing nothing. But he don't want the review because he want to just be left alone. So sometimes I have to do that. You? Uh-uh. No. I'm sorry. You can't expect me to not hit you with the rod and rebuke you sharply when you don't feel like it. <laughs> oh, 
Okay then, I act like you did. Don't bring me no more books. <laughs> she ain't got no problem. Bring me no more books. Man, I'm all right. I'm misusing the trick. You do sometimes. <laughs> hey, if I give it to you like that, you need it.
Because you know why? Many don't want their sins exposed. They think they're perfect. They think they know everything. You can't tell them nothing. They think they're good. They think they're good. Yes, y'all do. All of y'all do. Y'all know nobody don't want to be uh, told what they fault is. But don't you know I go through it every day? I go through it every day with my wife. And the reason she ain't here today, she's sick. But she ain't being evil today. She's sick. She's sick. And I had to explain that to her. I said, why you get upset every time I correct you and you're wrong? You're not perfect. I, if you ask me something, I tell you. After I tell you, you get mad at me because I told you, right? That's crazy. That's crazy. What I want to say is that I'm speaking for myself. That, you know, some things that I would like to bring to you, mm -hmm. I don't bring them to you because um, I remember you preach on a sermon once and said that when we do stuff like that, we rising up against the preacher. So I've been told so that. Well, it, Carolyn, you you guys got to listen to what Charles said. Listen. Y'all <laughs> act like y'all listen. Let me explain. I'm serious. Y'all like y'all don't have a discerning spirit. And all believers that are born again has a discerning spirit. That means you can discern, you can dissect what's right, what's wrong, when to come, when to come. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm honest, I want y'all to listen to what y'all are saying. I'm, and, and show you that you're not dying to self. You're not dying to self because you're seeking to protect self. I want to do it, but I but I say no. You're seeking to say you, you, you're protecting yourself. You're trying to protect yourself. Most of all, I'm not really loving you. I'm not truly, No, you're not. I'm not truly loving you because that hurt you. You know that hurts me when y'all tell me that. That hurts. I mean, a lot of us say that we love you, but we won't speak up and say Amen. So we really Do I love you? We really truly don't love do you. Do I love you? Yes, you do. I stand up there and I talk about yes, I do. I guarantee you. you that why y'all don't do it to me? Why y'all don't do it? 
Let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ. This is all you're supposed to look at me as. Mm -hmm. A minister of Christ, a steward of the mysteries of God. No, that's all you're supposed to see. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. So what you should be looking for in me? Right. Faithfulness. <coughs> Do this man stick with the word of God? Mm -hmm. Do this man live this word of God? Mm -hmm. That's all you're supposed to be looking for. Is this man preaching the word of God? Mm -hmm. That's all you're supposed to be looking for. That, that's all. You ain't supposed to be listening to my voice. You ain't supposed to be watching my antics. None of that. Because God uses that. You take that away from me. You make me stand up like this. You make me preach like this. You did. You make me like this. This, this is how it was when he caused me. And this is how he killed me. Now, if he want to change, he has to do it. Why is he keeping me like this? That's what many of you need. You don't need no soft preaching. So you all hard at Quiet is mixing in. Mix it hard at it. I can't have quiet. He can sit up here. He can't go walk like that. Like <laughs> mixing is a piece of work. <laughs> Am I lying, Cleo? No, you're not lying. Am I lying, Paul? No. Am I lying, Glenn? Am I lying mixed? <laughs> this dude right here, boy, he talking about can go word for word, line for line, man, shut. Mix it and hand you something. You don't want to get into it with mix. You don't want to get in no conversation with mix and try to be slick, talk slick. Yeah, man. And hit you with some word, too. But I love mixing it up. He will listen. Yes, he will. But this is how you're supposed to be looking at me. Look, for I know nothing by myself. <laughs> I know nothing. This is how you're supposed to count on me. I know nothing by myself. Still, I am not, by knowing nothing by myself, innocent. I'm not declared innocent and not guilty. I'm not justified. But he that judged me, yeah. It's the Lord. Why? I'm his minister. Mm -hmm. Therefore, judge nothing before the time. Till the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness, will make manifest the counsels of the minds and the hearts. And then shall every man have what? Praise of God. Thank you very much. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> No, let's, 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 let's keep reading. Let's finish reading here. Verse number, what, I stopped at five? Yes. yes. Yeah. And these things, brother, I have, I, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sake, that you might learn, what is that? That you might learn us not to think of men, not to think of men above that which is written, that none of you be lifted up one for another. 
For who make thee the difference from another? What hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now, if you didst receive it, why do you throw it if you didst receive it not? Yeah. Now you are poor. Now you are rich. Ye have reigned this king without us. And I would, you would to God you did reign, that we also might reign with you. Now you are full, now you are rich, you have reigned as king without us. And I would God you did reign, that we also might reign with you. Now that is not what I'm looking for. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. First Corinthians 3 or 2. Hold on. natural man, this is what I'm looking for, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, but they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Right? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. now, look at verse 15, this is the verse. But he that is what? Spiritual. Judges all things. Yet he himself is judge of what? No man. He is judge of no man. For who have known the mind of the Lord that he may do what? Instruct him. him. But you have the what? Mind of Christ. So bow to the will of God, account me as a minister, and that's it. You don't sit, that's why I tell you, don't sit in judgment. But I'm preaching, don't sit in judgment for the word of God. For his minister. And many of you, and many of you, thank you, that's what it's supposed to be. And many of you, that's what you do. When I'm preaching, you sitting in judgment of the word and sitting in judgment of me. And you're not supposed to be sitting in judgment of me and the word of God. That's what Paul told them. I'm looking at the scripture where he said, it is. He said, it is a small thing that I should be judged of you. It is a small thing that you should be sitting there investigating me and well, questioning. First Corinthians 4. You skipped over verse 3. I did? Yeah, that was the verse. That was it? That was the and, verse. I, and I skipped over. <laughs> that was old boy, wasn't it? Yeah. You didn't want me to read that. No. no. And I, knew it, I, I knew it was there. Yeah. Right. This is exactly it. First Corinthians 1. 4 and 3. That, yep, <laughs> but with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you. Yep. That's a small thing. That, that's with me. A, you're, not, you're not supposed to be sitting there judging me. Nobody. You're not, judge means to scrutinize. You're not supposed to be scrutinizing <laughs> and, and, and investigating. Now let me tell you what just happened. Careless enough. You're not supposed to interrogate me. You're not supposed to question me. You're not a state's attorney. That's what Satan does. You're not supposed to interrogate me. That's what that's what yours mean is the word anacrino. Y'all go home and study this. I tell you, and that's another thing. <coughs> why there's a lot of misunderstanding here. Y'all don't study what I tell you to study. If you go on and do what your past acts should do. Y'all have a better understanding of what I'm saying. Y'all have a better understanding on how I present the word. It's anacrino. Y'all not supposed to be sitting here investigating me, interrogating me. I'm not supposed to be interrogated. I'm not supposed to be examined. You're not supposed to examine and interrogate me. You're not supposed to question my method. Whatever means that I see fit as being a minister of Christ that is not opposed to his word or his method of preaching, I can use whatever it is, because all things is his anyway. All things is his. Whatever, whatever way that I am laid by the Spirit in 
my study to present the word of God to you that is not taking precedence over his word. I can use. I can use any means. It's what I read, what I, I speak as a foolish man, I know nothing by myself. The things that I read, I know y'all wouldn't comprehend them if you read them. You wouldn't. I'd be showing Charles, and I'd be reading Charles, and Charles, and I'd go back and explain it to Charles. And then he understand. It's just like this thing with the Spirit of God. In each book, the, this how we know I was just teach you. I know we got you. Because the Spirit told Paul. Let me show you something. Let me just show you one thing we can be out Go to book of go to book of Acts. Go to book of Acts. Let me show you one thing we got. Go to book of Acts. Go to book of Acts. Acts chapter 20. Go to book of Acts. Say again. Acts, Acts chapter 20. Y'all need to tell the devil to shut up with your flesh to shut up. Why I'm preaching. That's what you need to Amen. I'm serious. Boy, leave me <laughs> Now look, let me show you something. Now you watch this. Now watch this. Acts chapter. Acts chapter. Acts chapter. Right? Mm -hmm. Now watch this. Acts chapter 20, verse 17. You got it? Mm -hmm. It said, from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. Right? Amen. He go, and uh, and y'all remember what he told the elders. Go over to, go to verse number 28. <coughs> this is what he told the elders. I'm showing you apostasy. Okay? This is what he's, <coughs> he, he told the elders. Verse 26. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. Now watch it. We looking at, we, we looking at, we were looking at an apostasy, a defection from truth. Okay? I'm going to show you a defection from truth in the Bible. Right? That's what we started in a short period. Now if I hadn't been studying other books and reading, I would have never seen this. But now I see it. So now I understand apostasy. I can show you. I, we looked at Genesis chapter 32. Exodus. Exodus 32. It began with that golden calf. Right. So all through the Old Testament, what are we going to see? The golden calf. Yeah. The gold. What did they have down in Bethel, Charles? Golden calf. Golden calf, calf fortune. That's what got them in trouble. Golden calf fortune. Golden calf fortune. Golden calf fortune. Golden Judah didn't even have no golden calf horse, did they? Nope. But then they adopted it, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Where did they go? They went all the way back down to Egypt. Because all they did was golden calf. Mm -hmm. So once the golden calf was established with Aaron, Aaron jacked them up, that was messed up. The golden calf carries all the way into, they go into captivity. Ten northern tribes, 722 BC. The, uh, the, the, two, the ten northern tribes, 722 BC. The two southern tribes, 586 BC. When they go into captivity, that's what <coughs> cures them of idolatry. So now they don't have no more physical idols. They themselves become the idol. Talk back with me. Amen. That's deep, baby. Amen. No more physical idols. Who become the idol then? Amen. They themselves. Now watch this decline. Paul says, wherefore, verse 26, he talked to Ephesus, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. He called the elders of the church, right? Yes. right. At Ephesus, right? Mm -hmm. Ephesus, right? Yes. right? He says to them, What if I take you to record? By verse 26, y'all with me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This day I have heard from the blood of all men. For I have not shown to declare to you all the counsel of God. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and all the flock, over the which the Holy Ghost have made you overseas to feed the church of God, which you have purchased with his own blood. For well, I know this, that after my departure shall grievous wolf enter in among you, not sparing the congregation. In the church, he talking to the elders mm -hmm. in Ephesus. He said, this, they're going to come inside your congregation. Well, they've been doing that to this ministry since I started it. Having that J.D. and Michael. Why have 
they been scattered and Mike and JD ain't been scattered? Why Mix is still here? He ain't been scattered. Why Paul's still here? He ain't been scattered. Why they couldn't scatter Paul and couldn't scatter? Why they couldn't scatter Paul, Glenn, Mix, and JD, and Michael, and they family? Now, now you know they got to be damn fools if they sit here and let me corrupt their sons. You know they got to be crazy. If they sit here allowing me to corrupt their sons. How is they still here and they scattered and everybody else going? Because all them was scattered here and was hooked up together. How was it that Brandon's wife, Lisa, was able to leave away Joel, the other lady, Ruby, and not you, and you, and you? How was that? How was that? That y'all didn't go nowhere. But Ruby left, Joel left, the Latrice left, the old lady left. How was they able to leave and not y'all? How was Kenneth able to leave? Then Isaiah was able to leave. And you didn't go nowhere. How? Do you think you kept yourself here? How was it that Maria came here? Then Maria left. And Maria came back, and ain't none of them they came back. Y'all don't see that? I do. I do. How is it Regina came, and Charlotte came, and Charlotte was here for Regina, and Charlotte gone, and Regina still coming. Y'all don't see that? Yes, it is. That's 1 Corinthians 11, 19. That they which are approved among you may be made manifest. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It's in the congregation. I'm trying to get y'all mind to get out from outside. We need to start working on us in here. That's what we need to start doing. We got a problem in here, y'all. I'm serious. I'm, I'm telling y'all what's going on now. You don't want them to come and take away the candlestick. You need to go back to your first love. Stop letting people look at you when people go on because of the preaching. No, they're not. Because I'm not more powerful than the word. Amen. Because they rebel as they ain't sheep. Can't run sheep off the sheep food. All that the Father gives me shall come to me. Amen. Paul said, take heed. He's talking to the elders of the church. Now you watch this. Take heed, <clears throat> therefore, to yourselves. And that's what I taught y'all Sunday. You got to be paying attention to you. I'm trying to get y'all to understand this book. I'm doing the best I can. I'm not the Holy Spirit, Paul. I can't get in you. Amen. I can't make you study. I can't make you read. I can't make you deny self. All I can do is use every method I can to show you what they're saying. And the more I see it, the more I'm trying to show you. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's like Paul just said, I don't know. I don't. I just do what I'm, I feel I'm led to do. I don't know. But I know he was displeased with us over there. I know that much. Because y'all get comfortable. And y'all relax. Y'all do. Y'all not doing what y'all supposed to do. Y'all don't got jobs and got money and get got your little, little prestige in the world. Things are just comfortable in your life. You probably got a few bills to pay. A couple more dollars here and there, you know. No persecution going on in your life. No sacrifice. You know, we lost that time over there. Y'all put a job first, a whole studio. I mean, and before when y'all first came here, boy, a studio, everything, for feel everybody. I'm serious. I got something to do all the time. I got something in the world to do all the time. I mean, I'm just so consumed with this world. I mean, it's always got something to do with it. it sucks, man. What? I got something to do all the time. It's something, all, something always coming up that I got to do in the world. No sacrifice. Can't tell my wife.
wife, no, can't tell the children, no. I mean, they need me. He said, if any man hate not wife, husband, son, daughter, and himself, cannot be my disciple. beat you and make you do that? It got to be in you. And I can't put it in you, J.D. I can't. I can't put it in neither one of you. I can't put that in you. There's nothing more important than your soul. God help you all in Jesus' name. Amen. If he says the situation you see it all this time, you go to hell. Amen. That'd be so sad. I wouldn't be, that'd be so sad. I'd be in a ministry 9, 10, 12, 30, then I'd get up and go to hell anyway. God help us. That's sad. All this truth that I keep giving you, the definition of words I keep reading and showing you, telling you to study, repent, turn from self, leave people in the world alone, leave things alone, leave that alone, leave it alone, leave it alone, let it go, leave it alone, leave it those who want it, let them go, leave them alone. Not for you. But I was reading at the job. You didn't count up the cost. Did you stop building? Maybe he ain't giving you strength to finish. Maybe you was presumptuous. I don't know. I don't. All I can keep telling you is what thus said the Lord. What thus said the Lord. What thus said the Lord. That's all, that's all I can do. I can't do nothing else. I can't. I can't do nothing else but keep opening this book, John, and keep living it the best I can with, with the strength he has given me in front of me. That's all I can do. I know when you're rebellious, when you don't want to hear. I know it. Look what he told me. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves. We ain't got time to be worried about nobody else, y'all. We don't. To all the flock. That's my business. Over the which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers to feed the church of God. And that's all I do is feed y'all. I feed you. 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 I feed you good. I speak foolishly. I know there ain't no ministry in the city of Chicago where they get four straight hours of food. <laughs> I know nobody get more word than nobody. You hate coming here, don't you? Tell the truth. Be here too damn long, don't you? Four dollars an hour. Yeah, I'm ready to go. See, it's time to go, man. I'm too long already. I'm going over time. I got to get you out of here, don't you? You got to go to work tomorrow, don't you? Take your shower and your bath. Get yourself together. And you steady running out the mouth. Pray, child, to come. No. <laughs> <laughs> thinking about her. You think I'm thinking about her? I got sheep to feed. Ma, that's why I don't come. See? See, Ma, I told you. He's going to be dead tonight. Can't help it. I can't help it. And now I got so much compassion. Because what Bridget don't say, Carolyn said, I want to just feed him and really, really show him. But we're going to go because I'm going to let it go. I ain't going to do that. The Spirit said, cut it off. Read Acts. It started with, he told them, Paul told Ephesus, they're going to come in among you. They're going to seek to make disciples of them for themselves. Among you. He told them. Then he sent Timothy to Ephesus to be a pastor then. And they was at the fellowship with other people works of God with them. And Paul told him that that was going to happen then. Who was the last one to reprove him? Jesus in the book of Revelation, in Revelation chapter 2. He said, now I'm through with you, Paul. Now you got it. Hey, see if I had been studying, I would have known that. He said, you keep on. I don't, Paul told you. I sent Timothy down there. You keep that crap going on. I'm taking your candlestick. That you really can see. And it, it, it was just, he started in Acts. Paul sent Timothy down there. Paul said, okay, you go down there because the elders ain't doing right, Timothy. Go down there and be an example for him. Timothy went down there. Paul wrote him a letter, said, I'm sending Timothy. 
Timothy the pastor down there, after Timothy stayed down there, that's why he worked first Timothy and second Timothy. Timothy was in Ephesus. They had a form of godliness, no power thereof. Christ, I'm tired of you. Revelation 2, I'm taking the candlestick. I'm going to try to get y'all to understand. That's the apostasy. That's scary. See, we ain't, y'all ain't seen it like that. And when I'm reading them, I'm saying, oh, Lord, I'm seeing it. He's showing you how churches be corrupt. It's going to be corrupt. Corinthians did the same thing. You best believe you're supposed to be growing in grace. You're supposed to be strengthening. Your faith's supposed to be increasing. Your love's supposed to abound one toward another. Amen. God, help us in Jesus' name. I don't care about it. I don't care about Neil being my wife. Y'all see she's doing something wrong. Y'all know she's doing something wrong. Y'all be proof. She get mad at you, the hell with her. What you gonna do? Take your persecution. If she wrong, she you know y'all know she's supposed to be in fellowship, rebuke her. Amen. She coming to me with that crap, I'm gonna tell you right. She divorced me, so what? What the hell am I supposed to do? Huh? What am I supposed to do? Oh baby, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Y'all leave my wife alone. Don't y'all say that about my wife. I gotta live with hate you. Y'all gotta be crazy. Y'all gotta be crazy, y'all think I'm gonna do that. Y'all gotta be crazy, y'all think I'm gonna do that. I'm going to tell you, you know what? Get right. You're supposed to be in fellowship. You're supposed to present your body a living sacrifice. Lay down your life. I wish that to be true. Oh, Lord. I'm going to try to get my book. Let me go back to your first love for real, man. We need to go back. Yes, we do. Y'all first came here to Y'all came here, y'all love God. Y'all got two pennies. Y'all learned the fruit scriptures. Got about four or five books. You won't sit here and judge the preacher when he preach. He preached that he too hard on me. He hung on the phone. He rebuked me too much. Every time I look around, he got something bad to say, but you low life you. It ain't worth the call. He needs to be rebuked. Pray. You. You know? Oh, Lord. Make sure you get up back in the next Tuesday so I can teach you how to pray. Come on, Charles, pray for us. Heavenly Father, forgive Listen us. Listen to Charles. Listen forgive to us Charles. first and foremost, Heavenly Father. We have sinned against you as we have in the days of our forefathers from Egypt up to now. Heavenly Father, please clear up all this error and all this ignorance that we read in this prayer. Help us, Heavenly Father, for we have sinned against you. Heavenly Father, be with us. Teach us. We may have to go back to milk, but so be it. Heavenly Father, teach us all over again. Help us to remember these sessions, these teachings that you have taught us through your minister, Heavenly Father. Help us to remember who he is. Help us to remember who we are, what our duty and our responsibility is. Help us, Heavenly Father, strengthen us. Give us courage. You said in your word, be of good courage. Present that to us, Heavenly Father. Be with us as we leave this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.